Just because a dog participates in bite work does not mean that it is a liability, especially if the dog is within the hands of a competent handler. What's good everyone? Just getting after it for another early morning and I hope you guys all out there are doing the same. Continuing on this mission to be able to create better individuals to give back to your dogs and to be able to give back to your family units. Now I wanted to share this conversation with you talking about what is the purpose of a protection dog? What is the purpose of a guard dog? And why would an individual or a family want such a dog? Let's be real. We do not live within a perfect world. We do not live within an existence where our reality is full of peace and harmony. No matter who you are and no matter where you are, there is always the possibility for yourself, your loved ones, your friends and family and those around you to be put under the threat of danger. It is a part of reality that none of us will ever escape. And that even goes for you guys out there living in the nicer neighborhoods in the nicer parts of the world. There's still things that happen out there too. As I said, this is part of the reality that we live in and it's something that we cannot escape. And the same thing correlates when it comes to our personal belongings, property, and our safe place that we call home. So here's a couple of easy examples of why one individual or a family would appreciate a good protection dog or a good guard dog and what the purposes are of this. So I'm going to put you in the shoes of the would-be perpetrator and the would-be intruder for both of these scenarios. So say, you are the individual that is cutting through the back streets, hanging out in the back alleys, hanging out out of the park, looking for someone to violate. You're that would-be perpetrator. You see an individual that walks through there each day. One day, this individual is walking through, headphones on, you're pretty sure that you can get the one up on them and you see that they have no concept of situational or environmental awareness. And because of this, you look at them and you say, haha, easy target, I'm gonna roll up on this fool. It is what it is. You get your one up. But then say this same individual walking through the exact same park, through the exact same back alley, but they have a strong, robust dog with them. They still may have their earphones on, whatever it may be. No real concept of what's going on around them. But they're walking through, they've got their dog, but their dog catches you. The dog catches you acting suspect, trying to sneak up on them. The dog turns around and the dog reacts to your presence. Straight away, the owner, the handler, has been alerted of what you're trying to do. Straight away, there is already a deterrent there because you don't know if this dog is actually going to bite or not. This dog has showed that he is ready to engage with you. This dog has given the buffer for the owner and the handler to react appropriately. You see how it works there? And even if it comes down to it, the dog's been trained properly and the owner has the correct job for this type of work, that dog will have no problem with engaging with you and getting busy with you. And let's be real, no one wants to get mauled by a dog. It ain't nice. Now for the second scenario. We have two different properties. I'm putting you in the shoes of the would-be intruder now. We have two separate properties. Both of them contain valuable assets. But one property has a strong guard dog there. A dog that is showing strong territorial types of behaviors and also showing that he is happy to engage with you. The other property on the other end does not. 
and is left unoccupied. You as the would-be intruder, what house are you going to burglarize? What house, what property are you going to break into? Pretty self-explanatory. See the peace of mind that a good protection dog or a good guard dog can give you? Because we need to be realistic. As I said earlier, we do not live within a perfect world. To think that you can forever put the accountability of your own protection, not only of yourself and others, but of your property into the police and into the government and into others, is just running away from your responsibility of understanding protection as a whole. This comes down to my next point. Let me share some videos with you. The little boy plays while his father is on the phone, unaware they're being watched by Michael Wilson. High on a cocktail of drugs, he rushes in. Wrestling with the two-year-old's dad as he desperately yells, don't take my child. The father was pushed into bushes and repeatedly punched, trying to protect his son. Rawson grabs hold of the boy and tries to run off, but a witness intervenes. Rawson runs off, later found hiding nearby. He claimed it was all a drug fueled mistake. The father of five thought the toddler was his own child. The judge said what happened is every parent's nightmare. To see the tenderness with which the father held and stroked his child after you run away just brings home how terrifying it must have been. Back again. Okay, so now that we've watched those two short videos and seen that little photo in between, let me explain to you why it is important to understand protection as a whole. That first video, we can all see that that man could have definitely have used a good protection dog and that would have definitely have helped his situation. But I'm sorry, not to add insult to injury. I don't know if you guys are thinking what I'm thinking, but that individual right there, he dropped the ball. He got caught slipping. He did not fulfill his moral obligation as a father. He failed within his fatherly duties in keeping himself in some type of physical shape when it came down to being able to protect his own son to protect himself from a would-be kidnapper perpetrator that definitely violated himself and his child you can tell that he was absolutely powerless to do anything and that he is beyond lucky that there were bystanders that were happy to try and help out the situation so understanding this, you need to be able to see it for what it is so that you can adopt the accountability within the keep of yourself to keep yourself in some type of shape physically and mentally to be ready to conduct yourself in the appropriate manner if you were to ever find yourself in that type of situation. And I understand there's always someone bigger and badder that can get the one up on you. But for that individual right there, that little fucking junkie grub, there is absolutely no excuse when it comes down to fucking vermin like that. If he was one to participate in strenuous physical exercise within his own daily routine, he would not have been overpowered in such a way. If he would take the time to learn 
has to defend himself. That little fucking junkie would not have put it over him like that, would not have violated him and his son in such a manner. He would have been able to defend himself and defend his son when it come down to that situation. So understand it for what it is. You have a moral obligation as a man, especially as a father, to fulfill. And it is absolutely inexcusable to allow yourself to become that soft. Now, for that photo in between the two videos. This is a reason why I like to participate in bite work with my dogs. It is not for protection and guarding purposes. Me personally, I can look after myself and I am the guardian and I am the protector of my dogs. I am their caregiver, I am their parent. They are my family, I am their pack. We are all the one unit. But just as we spoke about self-defense, this is self-defense for my dogs. You can see there, there are two little articles. The Australian article, where I'm from, the man jumped the fence and beat the neighbor's dog to death. For what? What type of fucking piece of shit does that? Fuck, I'd love to be locked up in a cell with him. But, God forbid my dog ever finds himself in such a situation, at least I know my dog can look after himself. At least I know my dog knows how to deal with pressure, how to deal with a would-be perpetrator in such a way. My dog will happily get busy with him. And I understand that not every dog is suitable for this kind of work, but for the dogs that are, why not, especially if it's done properly? Especially if the dog is within the constraints and within the hands of a competent handler and owner. And that little article underneath over in America, the ex-boyfriend kidnaps the dog, sends her videos of him beating and torturing the dog. <laughs> we live in a fucking evil place. Evil exists within this reality. Another reason why I like to teach my dogs to defend themselves. And that third video of the woman and the pram. Again, not to add insult to injury, but we must see protection as a whole. This is the importance of keeping yourself in some type of physical shape to be able to look after your children to be able to look after yourself. I'm sorry, but that baby, that baby needs protecting from her. You think about the bad lifestyle choices and bad habits that she is going to be projecting back onto her baby, back onto her child. Think about the development of this child, all the excuses, all the negotiation, of her bad lifestyle choices and daily habits. The way this individual is going to validate her own toxic and negative vices that she's attached to. She couldn't even understand the concept of keep yourself fit to be able to adequately look after your own child. I'm sorry, but she is definitely living a half-assed version of herself, of what her potential could be. And we need to be honest when we talk about these things. The fuck is wrong with the people around her? They shouldn't be just excusing this. Well, you're a mother, start looking after yourself. They start seeing her in the condition that she's in. Hey, love, are you okay? What's happening? How can I help you? What can we do to get you on track? How powerless would she feel 
not even being able to get up quick enough to stop her baby rolling out onto the road. Just like the first video, both of these individuals are beyond fucking lucky that there were bystanders that could intervene. And if she adopted healthier lifestyle choices and better daily habits, she would not be in the position that she's in right then and there where her baby nearly got ran over by fucking a whole bunch of cars and where she couldn't even get up quick enough to even do anything about it. How powerless this poor woman must have felt. And I don't say this to be a pity party. I say this because it's the fucking truth. I say this because people need to start speaking up for what it is and stop excusing everybody's laziness and procrastination and fake virtue of why they try to hide their weak and meek behaviors behind moral virtue. We need to do better, we need to be better. I hope you can understand protection as a whole now. I hope you can understand why it's important for us to adopt responsibility and accountability of our own keep behind a holistic way of protection. And mind you, I just want to make note of this too. Just because a dog participates in bite work does not mean that it is a liability, especially if the dog is within the hands of a competent handler and is being trained properly within a safe controlled environment to learn when to display these different behaviors in the appropriate manner. So for the rest of the video, I'm gonna show you some work with my boy Genghis, getting that working, getting busy with the decoy, all the rest of it, some of his development work, and then as well, I'm gonna show you him out in public to prove to you that a dog that participates in such work does not mean that it's a liability, that he is still a safe member and very loved member of our family and society. Peace. Hey.